Hey guys, Becky here, 52 Baker. Welcome back to my channel. So this week we are talking wafer paper. And if you know wafer paper, you know it basically looks like a regular sheet of printing paper. It's much larger than this, but you can eat it. It doesn't have very much flavor, um, but it is kind of fun because it melts in your mouth. So. so I've been playing around with wafer paper to make different origami things, like little fans, and if you're familiar with paper quilling, I've also been messing around with making little paper quill figurines. But in order to do that, you can't just use straight wafer paper and it's a little difficult to get it in color. So I'm going to share with you guys how it is that I condition my wafer paper to have it be more flexible, less prone to tearing, and also in any color that you have food coloring. So let's get right to it. All right, so we're gonna start off, we need something to measure with, some food grade alcohol and some food grade glycerin and a little container to put things in. I like to mark my container with the ratio that I'm using and the ratio I'm using today is two parts alcohol to one part glycerin. This is going to change depending on your climate and your specific needs. So if you have a drier climate, you might need more glycerin. If you have a more humid climate, you'll probably need less glycerin. This is going to leave it very flexy, so keep that in mind. You probably want to mess around with this before you go and make a whole bunch of it. Get those ratios into your little container and before each use, you're going to want to mix it up because the glycerin will settle to the bottom each time. Now to work with my wafer paper and condition it, I like to use a makeup sponge. I think it gets the best coverage that way. And all I do is grab the color that I need, put it in a little mixing tray, and then add my little Formula X here, my conditioner. If you're going for a very faint color, you're probably not going to get as even coverage. If you want a very solid colored wafer paper, you're probably going to have to go with a darker color, just an FYI. The other thing you'll need is cornstarch and something to apply it with. I like a big fluffy brush. So here goes my half sheet of wafer paper. It's plain and I just prefer to use the bumpy side first. I have that facing up. And when you do this, you don't want to soak it. You don't want to see that you're just going right through the wafer paper. You just want to do a very light layer. You flip it over and then you do a very light layer on the other side. If it starts to melt, then that's where you know you've gone too far. If you see it getting super bubbly, then you've probably put too much, but you can still go ahead and work with it. Once I've got both sides covered, then I douse it in some cornstarch, just dab it, and I feel it with my hand. If it's feeling like suede, then it's good to flip over. If it's sticky and tacky, then I need more cornstarch. And go ahead and lift one end and then I flip it over and I add cornstarch. You'll see that this color that I'm using is super light so it's a little blotchy. I'll have to do another round of color or add more food color. The most that I put on here as far as paint is three layers on one side but definitely mess around with it, see what works for you. This is just what I have found is working for me in this hot climate. After each round of paint, I go ahead and dab it with some cornstarch, and I'm just trying to stop it from warping because it's so wet. And you'll know it's ready when it just flops over like a piece of fabric. It's going to stay flexible for quite some time, but you want it to dry up a bit before you go doing anything with it. Now, one thing that you can do with it once it's dried up, and mine takes about 20, 30 minutes to dry up fully, is you can cut it into little strips and then roll it up super tight. And you'll notice that it doesn't 
start to crack the way unconditioned wafer paper normally would. And I love this because I've started quilling on my cakes and this works so perfect for it. And I don't have to use it right away. Another thing that I've been using on my cakes is little origami style fans. And so this, you can go ahead and fold it up any which way and it should be okay. The only thing is that you can't do super delicate things with it because it compares more to like a cardstock in terms of thickness because of all the layers of paint and cornstarch. And because it's just thicker, this is double ply wafer paper that I'm using. So keep that in mind that you won't be able to make tiny little origami things without a little bit of a struggle. But for these fans and for quilling, it works so well and I love how it takes the color. You can do multiple colors on one sheet, you can do an ombre effect, or you can do it all solid. And it folds and retains its shape super well. And if you leave it out overnight, it firms up so it will stand up straight and you won't risk it flopping over or any of that. But you do have about a day to work with it. The other thing is if you color this and cut it into strips and do all that, you can keep it in a Ziploc bag to help it retain its soft nature now that it's conditioned. And it'll last for a bit that way. The light pink ones you'll see are still flexy days later, but they're much firmer. The dark pink ones are the ones that I just made, so they're flexy, but they're a little floppy too, just to show you guys. All right guys, as always, if you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below and I'll make sure to get back to you. If you like this video and you found the tutorial helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And I will see you guys for the next tutorial. If you've ever had communion at church, this is kind of what it's like.